Hi, Theater Pizzazz. I'm Meredith Payman. So excited to be talking about Broadway with you. Joining me today is one of the stars of the upcoming new Broadway musical, Lampika, Andrew Samansky. Andrew, thank you so much for joining me and congrats on your upcoming Broadway show. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Very exciting. Very nice to be here. So thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's talk Lampika. For those who don't know, uh, the show is about the famed Art Deco artist Tamara, Lem uh, Tamara D. Lampika. Uh, you play her husband. I'm now nervous. Can I just throw to you to say his name? I'm getting nervous and I know I'm going to mess it up. We practiced this. We practiced this. No, uh, no I play uh, Tamara Delampika's husband, who was uh, Tadeusz, uh, very odd spelling, T-A-D-E-U-S-Z. So it makes sense why so many people mispronounce it. Uh, Tadeusz uh, Lempiki. It was originally Lempika, Lempiki. She changed it to Lempika uh, as an artist. But uh, yeah, I play her husband and they had a very complicated uh, marriage. Uh, I mean, I can get into the whole, you know, life history of their uh, marriage, but but needless to say, like all marriages are uh, complicated, but theirs was particularly um, complex for sure. sure. Yeah, they would definitely get the it's complicated. Facebook <laughs> right. right. They're so on Facebook. These two <laughs> just. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's all about their relationship on Facebook. That's yes, the, that's right? The musical, Probably, right? Uh, you know, uh -huh. what what is put out there but versus what is behind closed doors. I don't know. No, that's, uh, true. that's true. Just, just a possibility. Uh -huh. But you would know better because you have been with the show from the beginning for a long time with um, Carson, Carson Kreitzer and Matt Gould, who co-wrote the show. What initially drew you even to the subject before even the piece. We got a show about Tamara de Lampica and what makes you say, I want it? Well, like you, like most people, I, I just happened to, so I started with it six years ago when it premiered at the Williamstown Theater Festival. And honestly, it was the best scenario for an actor where I just got an offer to do this part. and. Uh, like I was saying, like everyone probably would, was like, what is Limpica? What is this thing? So with the offer, they gave me a script and demos and, you know, swear to God, I listened about 30 seconds of the first song and I was like, I got to do this thing. The music was so spectacular. So it was like anything I'd kind of heard on Broadway. It's, it's this kind of epic Les Misian, but very pop infused modern day score. Um, that's really thrilling. I mean, big singing, um, but again, this kind of modern sensibility that's just super cool. And I, I literally just heard the music and I was like, okay, whatever it is, I gotta do it. Cause music has always been kind of my first love anyway, starting as a singer um, and then kind of trying to learn how to act, but uh, no, music's always been my first love. So it immediately got me. And uh, and then I just went in with it and I fell in love with the piece. You know, like I said, it's about this very complicated, powerful uh, woman who has a very complicated life uh, and their marriage. It's about real people, flawed people. Uh, and it's a, it's a story about a real person. So, um, you know, how do you how do you top that you know when when it's that kind of rich and complex of a story and characters so it was it was kind of a no-brainer from the beginning and I, and I fell in love with it instantly but I feel like you can top that because even beyond going back six years with this show you had some kind of cosmic otherworldly at least international connection with Matt Gould I did so when I was in college years ago, um, my best friend, Barton Bryan, was this 6'4", you know, giant athlete of a man, adventurer type, um, who went into the Peace Corps after we graduated from college together into Mauritania, Africa. Nobody knows where that is. It's in West Africa, um, you know, kind of very ignored part of the world. And Bart, the adventurer, went off 
on an adventure and we stayed pen pals. And he writes me this letter at some point, I'm in grad school at this point, learning how to act. And he writes me this letter saying, Andrew, there's this guy here, uh, his name's Matt. He, he writes musicals, this other Peace Corps volunteer, you gotta keep your eye out for him. And, I'm, and I thought, sure, sure, but I'll keep my eye out for the guy writing musicals in Mauritania, Africa. And gosh, how many years ago was that? You know, uh, many years ago. I just happened to remember that name and I'd remembered him writing Witness Uganda. And so first day of rehearsal, I go up to Matt Gould and I say, hey, my best friend from college is Barton Bryan and his jaw about dropped on the floor. And we've kind of had this, yeah, cosmic connection ever since. It's uh, quite a small world, you know. That's we say it a lot in this business, but truly, I mean, crossing oceans and continents, a uh, small world. So, yeah. It's, you were meant to be, like, the two of you were always meant to connect. It feels like it a little bit, right? Work together yeah. in this way. I know. Wild, wild story. What is it about Matt Gold's music now that, that I guess, connects you so much to this work? You know, I think he really knows how to write music that's fun to sing. Um, you know, singers who can really sing, um, he knows how to write for the voice. You know, he's kind of a, you know, a, a performer himself in the sense that you, you can just feel the passion behind what he's doing in his music. Um, like I said, it's it's just big and and cool. I, I don't know, I mean, Broadway can be pretty cool sometimes, but, you know, Matt is definitely, has an ability to kind of infuse Broadway with, again, kind of the pop culture, pop sensibility. You know, what we hear on the radio is is like what we're going to hear in the show in many ways and 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 i think that's really exciting it, it used to be like that a lot you know you'd hear the broadway standards uh, on the radio all the big stars would sing them and and i feel like this is kind of the new version of that it, mm -hmm. it's it's just an exciting really exciting score and piece about a woman who i think kind of transcends time um we're still talking about the same issues of you know, sexuality and art and politics. So it's, it, it's just, it's, it's an exciting show. You should always yeah. see it. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, Matt's influence and uh, drawing on pop and Tamara De Lampica and pop, like that has had crossover too with Madonna's being inspired by Lampica. And we're seeing, we saw it in her last tour the mm -hmm. work of art and uh, her music videos have drawn on that inspiration. Uh, mm -hmm. What does that mean to you to have that that pop? The queen of pop loves Lampika. I mean, I th I think it speaks to the timeliness of of our show. You know, it's like Madonna's like trying to get this woman's name out there. I mean, people like Barbara Streisand own her own Lampikas, Beyonce. So, I mean, people in the know know about this woman. And so I'm hoping this show is kind of like, let's let the world know about, about this woman and, uh, and her art and her life with our, which are both equally, uh, you know, amazing, so. Now is Lampika one of the first Big Broadway productions that brings you back to New York since the pandemic. You were in Salt Lake City for a bit. So is this one of the first work uh, related things that is, you know, bringing you back permanently to the city? Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, a lot of strange things happened during the pandemic. And, and one was that uh, my my wife and six-year-old and I all ended up in Salt Lake City for about the last four years. Uh, my wife, Kate Reinders, uh, was shooting a show, uh, High School Musical, the musical, the series. Uh, she was Miss Jen, the drama teacher. And, uh, and we just, you know, I was on tour with Come From Away. The pandemic happened. I went straight there. And, you know, she shot four seasons there. So, We've, we've been there for four years and we've kind of loved it. And so 
you know, there was no, kind of no reason to come back. And we were kind of waiting and waiting. We did do a production a couple summers ago of La Pica at La Jolla. So we did that obviously with hopes that it would come to New York. And, and here we are. I mean, I've been back and I've visited, I've done a couple readings and I uh, did a concert at Carnegie Hall my first time, which was amazing last summer. But, uh, but no, to be back on a permanent basis uh, to a place that I've lived off and on for, you know, 15 years or so is, uh, is wild. It's like I have to get my, my walking legs back under me again. I mean, it's, it's a real thing, you know, and uh, I come home exhausted and, uh, you know, oh, that's right. There's no big grocery stores. There's, you know, it's, it's, it's different, you know, and, and, and I love New York, but, but it's, it's a transition again, for sure. Um, but what better reason to be back than a Broadway show, of course, so. Absolutely. And I feel like I kind of want to backtrack a tiny bit, but you've spoken about your connection to Lampika and to the art and just this work, but your connection to your character, which I'm now just too afraid and embarrassed, I'm going to butcher his name again. I can just try be it. cool and call him Lampiki. I got that part you down. Could. But you the. Could. <laughs> <laughs> or you could embarrass yourself. <laughs> I knew what to da to douche to to douche to douche. Think today. Think the word today, and then ouch. Today. Today ouch. Oh, today ouch. Okay, I got it. Perfect. Today ouch. I made it more complicated. Story of my life. Uh, yeah, right. Right. Yeah. As Overthinking. Speak. All right. So connecting with today ouch, Lempicky. Uh -huh. How are you yeah. finding that? You know, he's, he's kind of a man of his time, um, an aristocrat uh, in a fast changing world. Uh, they, what happens is they have to escape the Bolshevik revolution. Uh, you know, the aristocrats are kicked out of Russia and they escape to uh, Paris destitute. And he finds himself in kind of this art world you know, not among his people, his, his life, his land, um, you know, and so it's, it's an adjustment and a big adjustment, obviously. And I think, I think an easy way to relate to him is, I think, uh, the world, our country is changing a lot today, you know, and we find ourselves having to relearn, uh, grow, uh, let go of old ideas and, and that is Tadeusz's big struggle and how to kind of, and, and he stays because of his great love for his family, for his wife. And he has a real reason to try to change, but the question is, can he? And uh, some of us are capable and some of us maybe are not. And, you know, that's, that's the struggle I think we all are having is where do we fit in in this world that's constantly changing and who are we if, if it changes without us. So I, I find him uh, really interesting in that way. And uh, so I, I have a lot of love for this guy and empathy. <laughs> yeah. And you even got to talk to uh, Tamara uh, Lempika's great, uh, great granddaughter, if my notes, mm -hmm. uh, about him. What did she, how did she help to inform your research? And yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, what a wild thing to meet people related to the people you're, you're playing. And I, yeah, I've got to meet the great granddaughter twice and, and even uh, the granddaughter, Cazette, who is a character in our show. So, so that's especially, uh, no, I'm sorry, Cazette's daughter. So that, that's especially wild. Um, but yeah, when I, when I talked to her, it, it was always interesting. You know, she, she, she just loves, you can tell she loves her, her kind of lineage so much. And the great granddaughter was saying that uh, today, you know, that Lampika had confessed that today was always the great love of her life. Now you'll, I mean, you'll have to see if that ultimately is, is kind of what, what happens, but maybe she was just kind of, you know, trying to make me feel better, but, but it, it, it's always just so rewarding to kind of get that real person connection with, with the people you're, you're playing on stage. So um, she's been a huge, she's a huge fan of the show and it's just been a cheerleader for us all this time. And uh, so that's really been nice having her around. Absolutely. Well, Andrew, I cannot wait 
to see Lempika and everybody else. Don't miss out either. Uh, preview start March 19th, right at the Long Acre. Opening night is April 14th. Andrew, thanks so much for joining me and chatting about the show. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Stay with Theater Pizzazz for more news and reviews for Broadway and theater and interviews from me. I'm Meredith Heyman. We'll see you next time.